kitchen I'm here with my buddy Andre Santana who's here for uh, homestay from Brazil Andre's here just for fun with me on in this video because he looks cool he's got nice tattoos anyway we just had dinner with uh, Cheryl Bailey she's an amazing amazing guitar player from New York who teaches at Berkeley and we're shooting some uh, DC music school videos with her and she was sharing a story that kind of resonated with me. She told us, because Andre is from Brazil, and she was telling us that she had this one guy, student from Brazil, show up to, I guess, Berkeley. Yeah. And he did not have his stuff together, did not know chords, did not know scale, like, you know, like, didn't know anything, quote unquote. But when he played music for her, she was very touched and very impressed. And then one day, she got to see a video of him and his family, like a Christmas gathering or something. And everyone, not a musician, but they were playing music and it was just coming out of like so naturally, like beautiful music, Brazilian music. And um, that kind of reminded me of, uh, of, well, everything that I've been talking about in my videos, how at the end, of course, having the knowledge and everything, that's very, very good to have for obvious reasons. But sometimes people have all this stuff together isolated stuff theory scales whatever but they cannot play music and there's well this is subjective but it's like it's not music from the heart and this is something that i learned a lot from the gypsies i talked about this in previous videos um one thing that i didn't mention about my experience with uh gypsy musicians not just the city but i used to play with roma hungarian roma romanian roma uh, where else from other countries <laughs> and I, I used to have this regular gig at a place called Cafe Sarajevo where the, the boss Osman who unfortunately passed away um, was a big fan of like music of, from his childhood you know from the 40s 50s 60s 70s and when I would play with these uh, Hungarian Roma or Rubino whatever there would be the violinist the father the whole family would come and they were all musicians and um, they would play they knew every single song it says that these guys were human jukeboxes they uh, they had the whole popular music movies you know uh, old jazz tunes the whole repertoire in their head and the, the the pianist would harmonize on the spot and change the harmonies every single chorus so this reminds me of the thing that I tell you to do you know when you learn a standard try to Put chords, ooh, beautifully added too. Mm. You know, do this kind of exercise and see what kind of new harmonies you can come up with. Oh, so out of tune. Um, you learn so much by doing this because that's what that pianist was doing. He knew the melody and he knew which notes the melody notes uh, were on and he could put a chord beneath it and it could be different chords it would be different chords at every chorus and that had a profound effect on me 
a lot of these people didn't really know so much theory they just had the music in them and i share that story for example of uh in Django's time before Django become became famous and while he became famous when the gypsies were playing uh, in western europe like i said the story of bambura ferre they were doing all these things they were playing the stuff that people wanted to hear in those days music that made them dance or music that they heard in a movie or something a play whatever um <clears throat> so that was one of the songs that you heard me play in the beginning and that's actually this past summer i picked up the violin again after a four-year kind of break i started in march of 2017 at the encouragement of christian van hammer then i stopped during the pandemic now i picked it up again and i'm having a lot of fun i hope i continue but the reason why i i played that and even based on a lot of things is because of the confidence that uh, the gypsy community gave me be, me being involved with them for so many years one thing that i've noticed and i've said before these are not generally speaking they're not the kind of people who will ask like am i allowed to play this scale am i allowed to play this place what if i do this is this correct they're just going to do it they're going to try it and then they're going to figure out if it works or not through their own instinct i know i'm not going to say who it is but a fairly well-known guitar player nowadays when he was young about 15 years old he used to play major chords like this let's say g major he used to play g major like this so it'd be like i never said it as a huh that's random strange but now a few years later he's an adult now he realized okay at one point you realize that was not good through instinct they're gonna through trial and error they're gonna try something and they're gonna do it you know Fabi Laferta who was one of my mentors he plays a uh, Portuguese music uh Fado and he plays the, the the Portuguese guitar which is traditionally played with fingers I believe but he plays it with a pick and he makes it work and I think one person told me like you can give a gypsy any instrument and without instruction they're gonna figure out how it works whether it's the correct technique or not they don't care they're just gonna find a way to make it work they're gonna make music with it and that's how it is also uh with the violin uh like favino laurier he picked up the violin i think it was like 14 and within two years he was playing beautiful music charlie burger he picked up i think it was 17 by the time he was 19 he had recorded an album on the violin now by classical violin standards it's not the quote unquote correct technique but it's beautiful music it's music from the heart <laughs> But anyway, it gave me a lot of confidence to pick up the bass, the violin. Uh, really, spending a lot of time with the gypsies helped me a lot, gain a lot of confidence. Um, you know what, it's very hard to do these YouTube videos because I'm a hardcore introvert, believe it or not. To, to accept all these people from all over the world into my home to do this homestay thing, it's, you know, it takes a lot of, uh, I don't know how to say it, but like willpower, training to, to to change this aspect of me that I, my nature is very reserved i need my quiet time my safe space <laughs> guys don't cancel me especially if you're from california <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, so, sorry. <laughs> so yeah very 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 much so for them they're not gonna hesitate they play the way they play it's very authentic in that way and uh, it has everything to do with how they live their lives, you know. Uh, and that's also the reason why I tend to be very welcoming here because it's the way they treated me. I would show up to their uh, a town or whatever with the a gypsy community. They would organize parties for me, and people would travel from you know hundreds of miles just to say hi. And that really touched me. I remember at one time we had this big party in Forbach, and there gathered everyone and they started this huge barbecue and it's outside the, so they live like in this neighborhood it's not a ghetto but like they all the all the families in these uh, residential units are gypsies and they're all related so while they're were outside making the barbecue the mother of one of the musicians from like the fourth row opens the door and says, Dennis come here come upstairs fourth floor what okay we're on the fourth floor huge plate of spaghetti and i was like hey i thought we we're making a barbecue yeah but just have a little something like, what so i had the big spaghetti here have another one i had to eat it you know and then after the the party started with the barbecue it's just like the hospitality 
That has <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man, sorry. Sorry. I can control it. That 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 had a huge impact on my life. So you know, because they all live in close proximity to each other. People would just walk in, in and out, family members, and someone would be playing guitar, oh, someone would come back, come come in and say, oh, there's a chance to go back to their house, bring another guitar, and just we play all day. Uh, I find that so, so very cool. This fearlessness, and the way that they would improvise, not just on the guitar, but in life. Like, you know, if a guitar string is broken, they don't have any guitar string, maybe they'll take a, a wire or something and just replace it that way. Um, Paulus Schaefer, um, like even 24 years ago, 20 years ago even, did not have a so-called, you know, gypsy style guitar. Because in those days, they were just starting to be mass produced and only can only get Luther guitars. They played on these cheap arch top guitars. They even recorded an album with it because that's what they could afford. That's what they could get. But they sure sounded in the style, you know. It's not about the gear. Not the gear is great. But it's all here in the heart. It's in it's in your mind, your body, the way you are. For me, that's that, that's really the, the the gypsy style. I remember playing also with the Hungarian Roma. It would be the same thing. They just knew so much music. They did get some kind of training, but still, they they knew how to play music for an audience. I remember at Cafe Sarivo, Osman liked the the theme from Doctor Zivago. I still remember it. it. Went like this. <laughs> G major and then D7. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, da, da, da. No, no. How long? You have to listen. Oh. One, two, three, ah, ah, ah. That's it. Beautiful. Play like that with the camouflage company. They would do all sorts of things. And this was the kind of music that Django. Uh, before he got into jazz, and that gypsies in Germany, etc., around that time, were playing music like this, uh, music from you know, like Russia, you know, like, you know. play the chords to uh, Dark Eyes, but don't go to B five, just stay D minor. Okay, one, two, three, four. Maman, tu es la plus belle du monde, tribute to Fabi Lafertin and the uh, Bambou La Ferre. Like I taught you this German song, Du bis de Echte. Amazing. That's how I had to learn a lot of times. 
were no charts. I just had to listen, 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 and just catch. Uh, it was not easy, but it was really one of the best pulls. That's how you get. And I had to catch it without really trying to understand the theory. I was like, oh, okay, I put the finger here. My finger is here. Oh, it's this chord progression from that song. And that's often, even to this day, even though I do know a lot of theory, when I'm thinking about music in that way, it's, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's more of a feeling of something familiar that I've heard before. So, ah, uh, you know, like this. Ah, uh, it's 4-4 four, four minor, yeah, theoretically, but it's like, uh, Just friends, lovers no more. It's see you in my dreams. It's, uh, it's the end of all of me, for example. Then after this, it's so many different things. That's what I'm thinking first and foremost before I even think 4-4 four, four minor. One, you see, <laughs> proof. That was, that, that was proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 this feeling. Uh, lots of things like that, man. And this fearlessness is something. I guess the point of this video, I want the, the wisdom that I want to impart with you, is just do it. Just try. Um, in some ways, don't necessarily be afraid of quote unquote forming bad habits. If you're gonna form bad habits, I think. I think people just might disagree with me, but just hear me out. If you're going to form bad habits, I don't think that's a big deal. Because if you truly love music that much and you truly really want to get good, you wanna, you're going to want to correct it, you will correct it. You will find a way to correct it. Because I've had a lot of bad habits, but basically, just like me being an introvert, my desire to play music was stronger than everything else. And I did what I had to do to correct whatever weaknesses I may have had and still have. Well, I've corrected all the major ones so that I can function at quote unquote at a decent level. So that, that's that's what I feel is important. It's just like that young kid who's pretty famous nowadays playing this kind of chord like in the beginning. And there's another one who's very, very famous right today. And I knew that person when he was like, I don't know, eight years old. At that time, it was, of course, just started playing guitar, but it was pretty bad. He was trying to shred and it sounded like this. <laughs> But now that person has one of the craziest chops in the world. It's insane. People are so in awe of this person playing. He had all these bad habits, but over time, the desire to play well and this inner drive and probably got getting feedback from other people, family members, allowed them to progress. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Don't be afraid, man. Just do it. Nike. I love child, child labor. Yeah. Child labor is the way. There we go.